for a long time, as the economy seemed to be roaring and interest rates kept creeping higher, the real estate investment trust just couldn't get any traction. But once people started worrying about a possible tariff-induced worldwide slowdown, and the yield on the 10-year began to back away from 3%, the REIT suddenly came back into style. Which brings me to one of my favorite REITs, Ventas, VTR. It's the healthcare-oriented real estate investment trust, owns senior housing facilities, medical office buildings, hospitals, research labs across North America. This is a great real estate healthcare play. On Friday morning, Ventas reported a strong quarter, even though its funds from operations came in a bit light. Its revenues, which is what I care about, was much higher than expected, rising by 6.8% year-over-year. Management raised their full-year guidance. The business is growing across all segments. Things look terrific. Even better, Ventas announced an amended agreement with Brooktail. We're going to hear more about this. Its largest tenant to resolve a number of issues that have been weighing on the stock. That's how its share price could surge more than 8% on Friday. Oh, and by the way, 6.1% yield, more than covered by the funds from operations. Looking pretty attractive here. So can Ventas keep climbing? Let's take a closer look with Deb Kafar. She's the chairman and CEO of Ventas. Hear more about how our company's doing and where it's headed. Ms. Kafar, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Deb. Have a seat. Great to be here. Uh, This was really the quarter that we've all been looking for. All the objections were answered. And I'm trying whether we should figure out to start with the upgrading of the portfolio or the Brookdale deal or something you told us would happen, which is that people have stopped building senior living. You said that there was a peak, you held back, and now it's coming down. Is it going to stay that way? And that's great for you. Wow, there's so many good things to answer yes. there. Yes, we, we can start with earnings, which, as you mentioned, were above expectations. Our guidance was raised. Uh, the senior housing business is a great business. We saw starts continue to come down. Only a little over 6,000 units That's got started in the whole in the country quarter, in, in the top 99 markets. That's unbelievably yes. low. That could have been five markets five years ago. Exactly. Wow. And so it's off of, it's the lowest since it's been in 2016 and nearly half of what it was at its peak right. in the end of 15. Right. So a good sign. Right. Now, how about something that the analysts aren't asking about, but I see because I deal with a lot of companies, you know, as you know, my late father had it. I often talked about it, this long term care where you stay at home. Yes. No one's writing these policies anymore. Right. Isn't that it, uh, good for Ventos that people have, you know, they basically want to go and have to go to senior living because you can't stay at home. No one's going to give you those policies. Well, exactly. I mean, we have so much good work to do to show how beneficial to health and wellness and longevity communal living right. is. And the industry really is just at the beginning of being able to demonstrate that. We've got about 11 percent penetration among seniors who mm-hmm. use senior living, and we'd love to see that much higher. One percentage point of penetration fills all the vacant units. So that's yeah, obviously that's a really important criterion for us to get moving on. I want to get to the Brooktail deal, but one thing I, I see is, is that the portfolio, even since the time I've met you, portfolio is upgraded everywhere, yes. and the clients have much better credit ratings yes. everywhere. This life science medical office, university-based life science, to me is the most excited business you have. Tell us it about It is. That. So we have been rotating our capital away from the skilled nursing business, right. which we exited Tough. strategically and profitably. We've cycled that into a business now that's at $2 billion and growing, where we're doing business with the leading research universities in the nation, building brand new research facilities where they can cure cancer mm-hmm. and do all kinds of wonderful things. With great universities you're affiliated with. Yes, Brown, Penn. Yale, yep. Penn, exactly. And this business has huge demand. We have great expertise, and it is our number one capital allocation priority. And we continue to develop new customers and also build on the campuses where we are, like Penn. Okay, now Brookdale, this had been one of these things. These shorts are going to be, why do you like the vent? They got this problem with Brookdale, and they don't even know what it meant. But why don't you clear everybody up here on how good this deal is? Yes. Oh, well, the Brookdale lease extension that we announced on Friday is really fantastic. It's great for us, and it's also positive for our customer, Brookdale, who's the largest provider of senior living in the U.S. and a a longstanding customer. The main point is that we extended our lease maturities on about $180 million of annual rent out to 2025. And so we have eight more years of lease protection guaranteed by Brookdale. And that's, of course, we start to see in 2020 the huge growth in the senior population. And so by 2025, this so-called silver wave will be rocking and rolling. And that is really, really positive for us. Now, uh, people are always saying, wait a second, 6% yield, something must be wrong. 
Your coverage is magnificent on the 6% yield, right? Our dividend is really rock solid, right. and I cannot think of anywhere else in the equity market where you could get a company with our balance sheet, our track record, our demand story, and a 6-plus percent dividend. Right. Now, your CFO, Bob Prost, talked at one point about stronghold markets, L.A. and Boston, yes. what he called challenge markets, citing Atlanta and Chicago. Can a challenge market become an unchallenged market? It can, and, and there are markets where you see it's easier to build. Atlanta is a classic one oh, in Oh, that's what estate. it is. It's just too easy to build. Yes, and okay. so um, people are building there. But you, when you look at the demographics, you also see that over the next five years, the senior population is supposed to grow over 25%. Right. So people are building where the demand is coming, but they are building in advance of it. And that's really what we have to work okay. through in... Uh, the coming period. Now, will we still see uh, dispositions? I mean, you had this $1.25 billion disposition mm -hmm. proceeds for debt repayment. Is that still going to be going on? We are expecting about a billion and a quarter of harvesting of capital okay. this year, about $300 million of which has occurred. And then we are using that to strengthen our balance sheet and create dry powder because, as you know, when the acquisition market is a good one, we are the first on the right. accelerator to be a consolidation machine. All right, one, one last uh, kind of existential situation that I know I talk about with our mm -hmm. friend Don Wood. Ventas, I sometimes feel, if it were not part of the Real Estate Investment Trust Index, yes. would be soaring here because there are some challenge players. But yes. there's really nothing you can do about this ETFization, right? It's your cohort. There's really, it's just, you just got to stay the course. We, we think that uh, some markets are not favorable to a particular company, even though the company may be doing well. Right. But I think we're really smart about executing on strategic alternatives, finding ways to create value. And this is going to be very powerful when we get to the other side. So right. we feel really good about where we are. I think you're pretty much closer to the other side. I think you're... You're humble and you fight, and I know that I can make the judgment. I think you're <laughs> closer to the other side than, than we're making it out here. Okay, Thank that's you. Deborah Cafaro, Chairman and CEO of Ventas. VTR, so proud. This is going to be so right. 6%, the breakout quarter. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.